Hello everyone, Alan here. How are you today? I do hope you're okay. Um, and if you're not okay, I hope you'll be feeling much better soon. And hopefully just a little bit of calm, gentle time with me will make you feel a bit better. Today I am mostly talking about hand sewing, stitching or slow stitching, whatever. Sewing by hand. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm kind of following on from uh, a few podcasts ago when I was talking about slow stitching. Um, and at the very end, I'm just going to take you on a little outing to a market I went to uh, recently, which is just a nice place to go and wander around. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you everyone who made comments on last week's podcast, which was me sharing my thoughts on mindfulness and mindlessness. <laughs> Um, it was it was really lovely to find that my thoughts kind of resonated with a lot of you and and quite a few of you added thoughts of your own which I found very useful and um, so if there's anybody watching who hasn't read the comments it's um, it's lovely to read through so thank you if you did uh, contribute to that so yeah so today uh, I'm going to start off with a sewing project that I showed you the very beginnings of in my last sewing podcast and that was I was just learning how to do quilt as you go shapes. I'd watched uh, lovely Penny on Penelope's Chinwag and she'd done a little tutorial on on how to uh, use those that or use that particular technique and when I showed you last time I think I just made one or two shapes. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the little pile of shapes started to increase and I thought to myself, right, I think I need to decide uh, what to do with the shapes. And so I started laying them out and at that point I realised, I hadn't thought of this before, that I wasn't going to have any straight edges to my piece of shapes, hexagons all to put together. And so I had to think about that and I thought, oh, I think I would like to make something with some straight edges. So I went off and <clears throat> bought a half hexagon shape uh, to do. So I made some more shapes, half hexagons, laid it out. And I decided that I would like to make them into a, a, like a fabric basket so that I would add a base to it. So I got busy with that, um, sewed all of my shapes together, made sure that when I curved the piece of shapes round that the edges were going to match up. So it took, it took me a bit of working out. And then I had to work out what size circle I needed, uh, which was a, an equation that I got somebody to help me with. <laughs> So I had to measure the long edge, long straight edge, and that was the circumference of the circle, and then I had to work out the diameter. Anyway, as it turned out, the uh, diameter that I needed was exactly the same measurement as one of my cake tins. <laughs> so it was really easy to just draw around it and um, have the right size. And I was kind of a bit in trepidation when I actually sewed the base and uh, came to fit it and it was the perfect size so I was really relieved about that. Um, but then I decided I didn't really like the top of my sewing. It was just because there was slightly inaccurate matching up of the shapes and so I decided then to change uh, change my mind, not have a storage basket or maybe uh, a drawstring bag that could be a storage basket I mean yeah so so I added that on the top of a ribbon so I do need um one of those cord grip things yet to <clears throat> so that it'll actually stay closed but I am really pleased with it so I'll put together a little video to show you the stages of making it
so here it is and I couldn't be more pleased with it. Uh, I'll be happy when I've got a cord grip there to go on it there but uh, why is that's a really nice roomy bag and yeah uh, um, it might just be a project bag but it's, it's uh, one with plenty of space in it so um, absolutely uh, over the moon with that and when I bought the um, half hexagon template I did also treat myself to a um, <clears throat> a small square I think a two and a half inch square one as well so that uh, I might start just making some squares and then I will definitely find them easier to turn into something something else anyway put that down there so um, and another project that actually I showed you the start of last time I was talking about stitching was a, a stitch journal and I've been inspired to start doing that from watching lovely Marion on Marion's World and uh, I, I, my embroidery skills are very basic um, and <laughs> limited so I thought that would be the perfect thing to do to do a bit each week and learn some new stitches and techniques and I have been thoroughly enjoying it um, uh, and uh, I think I've already shown you the first three weeks and I'm not going to show you the other bits today. I am a little bit behind actually. I think uh, I think Marion's just done week 12 and I'm up to about week 9, 9 or 10. So I'm not very behind but <laughs> I'm going to show you that another time though. Um, but the one reason that I've got behind on it, it well it's, it's Marion's fault. <laughs> Um, because she um, showed in another of her videos a, a tutorial on making a sewing kit so a hand sewn sewing kit or otherwise known as a housewife or a husif or other variations of the name basically a, a fabric container for that's portable for all of your sewing bits and bobs that you might need if you're on the go or just to have easy easy at hand and Marion made the most beautiful one and oh I thought oh I just became obsessed with the idea of wanting to have one for myself. <laughs> um, I, I felt a little bit kind of in awe, so much in awe of, uh, of Marion's one that she made and if you haven't seen that programme and you're interested in, in hand-sewn things, I highly recommend it. I'll link it in the description box uh, below my video and you can go and have a look because it is so wonderful. Um, so yeah, so I, I was a bit in awe of it and thinking, oh, I, I don't know that I can do that really, you know. Um, anyway, I, I decided I, I wanted one so much that I would have a go. And at about the same time, I was uh, browsing on Etsy because I had a gift voucher given to me at the end of last year from my lovely sister-in-law Lorna. So hello Lorna and thank you ever so much for that gift voucher. You'll see in a minute what I spent it on. Um, and I was in the first place I was looking for uh, embroidery threads, some variegated ones because I didn't think I had any. In fact after I bought some I um, <coughs> I found that I had a pile that somebody had given up to me that they didn't want anymore. Anyway, never mind, I've got lots of variegated thread now. Um, but anyway, so something that caught my eye was a slow stitching kit. So I had a look at it and that, of course, I was instantly attracted because it said something about fairies and flowers and things. So I decided that's what I would spend my gift voucher on. So a little little kit of bits of fabric and things. So I'm going to let you have a look inside the box that came.
So seeing all of those lovely little bits, bits of fabric and bits and bobs of lace and things, that made me really, really keen to get started on my sewing kit. And uh, so, yes, I, so I videoed a few little parts of it, not, not to make a tutorial, because honestly, there's, uh, if you want to know how to make one, just watch Marion. Um, and I did, uh, you know, I, I only videoed a, a few little sections. In fact, I missed out. I didn't mean to miss out the part where I um, put the lining in and, and the pockets, but you, you can find out how to do that. Uh, you don't need to watch me. Um, so yeah, so I made a little video of doing that. I, I spent absolutely hours and hours and hours sewing this thing. I think for the last couple of weeks I've probably done more sewing than knitting and crochet put together, which is quite unusual for me. <clears throat> uh, so um, yeah, so I'm going to um, I'm going to show you a video of me doing parts of the, the making the sewing kit and then straight after that I'm going to give you a, a proper look through of how it is at the moment. I think it's very likely that I will add a few more things in fact, although it's got lots in it already. I um, haven't put that many needles and pins in it yet but uh, you know I, I think I probably will add one or two more things but uh, yeah so, so ha come and have a look at me making this beautiful sewing kit. So this is my finished sewing kit, or maybe nearly finished. Uh, the outside is finished anyway. And you can see here, I've just done a variety of simple stitching. <clears throat> running stitches, chain stitch, French knots. I've sewn on a couple of flowers here. I did my initial, my first initial in chain stitch with some variegated cotton. I added this little wooden flower here, uh, some bits of lace here and I did a uh, chain stitch down the centre of that piece of lace and on the back I've got some seed stitch, I did some crosses here, here I was practising lazy daisy stitch although they're still not to my satisfaction really but I was practising and this is just more running stitch but in the shape of a sun and a couple of little felt birds added on top of that lovely purple fabric and then I used um, a button that looked just right sort of a cord covered button I think it is really and then I used a piece of felt that I made myself uh, for the putting the buttonhole in I've just done blanket stitch around it and uh, stitched around the buttonhole as well there so inside, 
So we've got, what have we got here? A, a little flap here for putting clips onto. Two little slots here, one for a pencil and this is for a seam ripper. Little one. This is a magnetic needle keeper that I've had for absolutely ages. So it's just clipped into that pocket there. This pocket here, which it runs all the way across um, to the back. I put a popper on it here and inside it I've got a tape measure. A little Kath Kidston one I think that is. And then the pin keeper that I made. So here are all the pins around the side. And the ribbon I've used to join the two sides together um, is the same bit that I've sewn up here. I just had a bit left, so I thought I would use it. So that's that. I can pop that there so the things don't fall out. Then I've just sewn a pocket on here, which at the moment it contains um, a variety of sewing needles and some darning needles. There we go. Lovely fabric. Got little uh, spring fairies, or spring hairs or rabbits on it. This one here at the moment is just for needles and pins. So I guess it will get more things on it, but uh, I haven't done anything on this side yet. In the centre, um, I decided to make use of the pocket that was going right the way across and to make a pen holder. So that is a an erasable pen that you can draw on fabric and then you can um, erase it with heat. And then I thought I might as well make use of that space there and I made a little place for the thread which is quite firmly in, in there. I don't think I need um, a little top for it. Put some safety pins in. Um, I'll probably put another pocket here but at the moment I've got this little pocket with a spotty flap on it, pocket made out of a piece of lace and there are some um, press studs. I guess I'll put other things in there as well. And on this side I decided I might like to have a little notebook in here. So there is a little notebook which will stay nicely inside there. And then on the very last page I've got four different pockets all with little poppers on. In this one there is a thimble. So silicon thimble but I, I find that comfortable to use so that's good. And in this one I have got a needle threader. I need to find my other finer one as well but uh, that's just got that in at the moment. In this pocket here is the little pin cushion that I made inside a tin. Oops. And that just stays inside there with the popper. And then in this final pocket here, one of the most important parts are the scissors. And my mum gave me these and she made the uh, protector to go around the edge there. So that's perfect going in there and then it'll stay in place with that popper. And then finally, I just embroidered 2024 so that in the future, anybody looking at this will know when it was made. So there we go. Ah, I really, really love it. I cannot tell you how much I love that. And um, yeah, I, I'm going to treasure that now. I've, I've never had anything like this before. I had a <clears throat> tiny little needle book that I made when I was 11 at school. I think when I first went to secondary school and we uh, had needlework lessons, that was the first um that was the first project that we did. And I don't think I even sewed the pieces of felt together. I think the teacher had already done that. And I think all I had to do was to sew on a press stud to close it and, and embroider in chain stitch my initials. So that, that's all I had really. I didn't have anything that would be 
really handy and this this can come with me quite easily when I go off in the camper van and um, I'm just going to have uh, feel joy every time I pick this up so that is great and uh, yeah these these things actually are, are known to have been around from about the mid 18th century it was common for um, soldiers and sailors to take them off with or, you know off abroad with them uh, because obviously they had to mend all of their clothing and things and in world wars one and two there were lots of sewing groups that made this kind of thing uh, to send in care packages to soldiers that were fighting and um, they, sometimes they're done as a role uh, and uh, and sometimes as a as a book like this one with some kind of closure there uh, but Oh, they're just a marvellous thing and I'm very grateful to Marion for introducing such a thing to me. So there we go. So let's finish off today <clears throat> by going off to a market that is um, just not not far much further north from me than where I live in Durham. And uh, it's, it's in an old, well, that's not an old station. Well, the station is quite old. The station buildings are quite old. It's still a working station. Um, but there's, it has a big area on each side of um, the, where the platforms are. And for quite a lot of years now, there have been, uh, there's been a market there every weekend. So I thought you might like to come along with me, have a look. So there we are, that is me finished for this week and I'll be back again very soon to chat to you. But until then, do take good care of yourself, keep yourself nice and busy with whatever you like to do and I'll be back again very soon. Okay then, bye!